Hey everybody, it's Scott Detweiler here, and welcome back to another thrill-packed episode of Couch to Photoshop. And today we're going to actually start learning about uh, some of the healing brushes and healing capabilities inside of Photoshop. Uh, so there are a lot of these, and we're going to cover uh, probably one of the biggest ones uh, today, the patch tool. And we're going to talk about some of the gotchas in using this tool and its proper use. Um, because there's some ways to use it incorrectly, and you can do some amazing things with this tool, as simple as it is. Uh, so I'm going to kind of show you what is possible with that. Uh, so this is an image here from the uh, Shawshank uh, prison, if you've seen the movie. Uh, this is actually not in the movie. This is the tuberculosis ward at the very top of the facility. And uh, we're going to kind of use this image uh, as a point of departure for learning the patch tool versus using a portrait. Now, I know most people would say, I want to learn healing skin. Skin is next. Uh, we are going to learn how to patch simple things first because I use the patch tool a lot on floors. If you're working a lot with portraiture and you've got a mat or uh, some sort of uh, a floor or a paper underneath the, the portrait or the backdrop, you'll see that oftentimes you'll have marks, you'll have dust, you'll have heel marks, things along that lines that all have to be removed. And you can do some of that inside of Lightroom and Capture One, but sometimes you run into a situation that just requires Photoshop and that's why we're gonna cover it right away. I use this tool in almost every single image I create at some time or another, there's something that has to be removed. Uh, so today we're going to work on this image and we're going to talk about uh, how that tool can be used and uh, some of the things you should or should not do with it. So first of all, uh, we always want to duplicate the background we're working on. Uh, we don't want to wreck the base image. So uh, we use Control or Command J, that's your shortcut, and you'll have to learn that one. If you don't feel like learning it, then you'll click it and drag it all the way down into the Create New Layer icon. We'll do the same thing, uh, but not as handy. Now, one of the things about the patch tool is it actually requires pixels to be on the layer we're working on. So you can't work on a new blank layer and have this work. It won't do anything. So if we go over and we pick the patch tool, which is usually found here. So it's about the seventh icon down on your tool palette. And it can be any of these icons. And you always see the icon will change to whatever your last tool was. But if I make selections here, it's going to tell me that there's nothing there uh, because I'm working on a blank layer. So just be aware that uh, this tool must have a uh, actual pixels. There must be something on the layer. Okay, so let's talk about why, why we love this tool. So uh, first of all, if you're in Lightroom or Capture One, you have some rudimentary tools for removing uh, unwanted objects. And uh, often those are circular or they get weird around the edges and you just you get frustrated with the tool. This one is beautiful. You just highlight what you want like this and then you click and drag it to what you want to replace it with. It's that simple. And you can get creative, like for example, borrowing the bottom edge of one of these frames uh, to make that look a little more complete. And then we're done, that's it. Now you just click anywhere on the screen to get rid of the mask. And uh, it's just, it's amazing. So the other nice thing about this tool is you can really get a good rhythm to it. So by the way, I'm holding my space bar and scooching around my image. That is so handy. You have to be using that by now uh, already because that is just zooming in and out to move around is, is no, that's for the birds. So uh, in, in these cases, you'll just highlight what you would like. Let's say I like this shape here. And then you'll pick what you want to replace it with. And it will do its best to blend those things together and make it look great. Now there's two modes for this tool. There's the normal and there's the content aware. I will tell you to, I don't know, I'd say ignore the content aware version. It's trash. I really love the normal version. Uh, but you know, there's, there's some settings when you do content aware, but realistically the normal version of the patch tool does everything I need to do uh, nine times out of 10. I have no problem getting done what I want to get done with this. But the nice thing about this tool is you don't have to actually drop the selection between masks. So if we're working in an area like this, we can highlight this tool, this here, drag, find our, that was a really horrible selection. Let's do that again, Control Z. So I'm just gonna click, I'm just gonna tap on the screen first and then go and highlight this and then click and find where I want to be. And I don't have to click again. I can just highlight the next area and click and drag next area and click and drag. So you can quickly work through an image and uh, just find the things that are distracting to your eye or, or items that you want to remove. Now I have seen some people do skin retouching with this and uh, I'm not really a big fan of that, but you know, uh, if the image looks the way you want it to look and you think that's professional enough, then go for it. But uh, in general, I think there's better tools for skin retouching. 
but this is a quick and dirty way to go through the image. Now there are other tools I would use for smaller marks like this, but we're not gonna cover that today. We're gonna talk about the big ugly ones. So uh, this is where this tool shines. It does not create a repeating pattern like a clone stamp would. So a clone stamp can create situations where you have an obvious pattern to things. This tool doesn't do that. Uh, now it can be used incorrectly and you can get a terrible result with it, but just clicking, creating your mark and then going in. I actually try and find something to make it look like it's more interesting than it would have been if had I just gotten rid of the mark. Like this, I think having that little bit of darkness there helps sell that a bit more. I'm not gonna get rid of every mark in the room, but I'm looking for distracting elements, things that draw my eye that I would say, hmm, I wish that weren't there. Uh, that's where you'd use this tool. So like that. So let's double click on our hand to make it full screen. If we click on the layer eye eyeball to turn it on and off, you can see what we've done. Just kind of cleaning up the room a bit so that it makes a little bit more non-distracting kind of presentation to us. And you can do so much with this. Um, but it's a really simple tool. You just click on it, highlight what you want, and then move on. Tell it where you want it to, uh, to use as a source. So let's say, for example, you do a really terrible job like that, and you want to fix it. There are, there are some things instead of starting and stopping all over again. One is to hold down your Alt key. You can use, that's the minus, that will subtract parts of the mask out. And you can kind of correct your selection that way. Can we get a, just a bit too much? And the other one is the Shift key allows you to add to your selection. So you can add if you've done something silly and you, you kind of hacked off part of it. So between these two tools, you can kind of get this better. Now there are ways to make more accurate selections than what I just did here, but we're not gonna really kind of bang on those today. That's for another day. So when you get it happy the way you want it, then you can go and select what you would like to replace it with. Something like that. And that looks pretty terrible. And that might happen. So control Z and try again, try a different spot until you like one, you know, until you see one you like. And this may not be the best answer. Uh, so what I can do is, again, I can drop my selection and go and heal maybe part of this by borrowing something else. Uh, so you can get creative with replacing bits that maybe, maybe they aren't distractions, but you're like, I wish that were a different color. It will do its best to blend it together. So I use this tool constantly, especially as I say on floors, whenever we have a paper sweep, there's always a heel mark or something else and I need to get rid of it. It's so handy. And again, you don't need to drop between selections. You just go and you just keep selecting and it won't do repeating patterns unless you did it on purpose. For example, if you select this area and choose this mark here, uh, we could go and make pain for ourselves by making the same pattern on the wall. Now, in this case, that's a poor decision, but there might be situations where this is exactly what you needed to do, where you were looking for something to solve a problem, where you needed a pattern, or this part of a pattern missing or broken. Uh, say you have a mullion in a window that's missing. Your ability to go and highlight, well, let's use this one, I can highlight this mullion here, and then go and pick this mullion here to get a better fit. We, we could possibly do that. Uh, now we do have some differences in sharpness here. For example, this is not quite what we want. So we might have to do a couple passes to make things work. Um, but it's amazing what you can do with this tool uh, to me. It's one of the handiest tools I say I use in Photoshop on pretty much every image. You're going to use it in one place or another. So uh, that's it for today. Please make sure that you open a document, watch this video and follow along. And if you haven't already, please like the video so other people can see it. And what we're going to go to next time is actually talk about uh, some of the other selection tools and really get into selecting because selecting is a big part of using Photoshop and determining what operations you want to perform. So until next time, uh, have a great weekend now and I'll catch you in a few days.